super grateful and super proud to be right here in Franklin County and part of this community that does so many amazing things. That triggering, I mean, I went to Gould's almost every year. My kid had a birthday party there, right until the very end, and there's just so many beautiful things going on here. Uh, and I'm happy to be part of it. I'm happy to share our program with you tonight. You may see by my shirt here, I am a very proud member of the Gill community. I grew up in Gill, and I found myself right back there again, and I think I'm one of only like 1,400 people who could actually wear the shirt. It's pretty cool. And they sell it right at the town hall, which is so Western Mass, right? I love it. You your craft stickers and your Gill Billy shirt, and you're good to go. Um, I, uh, as I said, I grew up here, I left for a while, and um, something just kept pulling me back here. And I don't know about um, if any of you have left and come and have come back, but you know, you get that feeling when you kind of come past, I don't know, for me it's like past Northampton into Hatfield of 91, and they're like closer and closer, and everything just starts to like feel okay again. And that's what I feel is like so beautiful about where we live, and it's thanks to you and the community that we build that makes that feel real for me. So, thank you. Um, we're going to be here at uh, Valley Voices Voice, and we're really excited to be here tonight. Uh, storytelling is kind of our jam at New England Public Media, from the drama of the masterpiece to the kind of gut punch journalism that you get from NPR and thinking about. Uh, what we're hearing out of Syria and Turkey this week, and the incredible journalism, local journalism, that our crew does uh, here on the ground in Western Mass every day. Uh, we're here because we want to be telling the stories of Western Mass, and luckily for us, members of this community, we are going to be able to tell those stories in even more and amazing ways when we premiere on February 22nd. The Fabulous 413, a new program hosted by none other than Mr. Monty Belmonte. Paper. Penny Butler of the Fabulous Butler Boys Blues Band. 
Each road led straight and narrow into the high desert heat mirage. Forty-five years later, my journey to that particular crossroad in New Mexico is a blur, and I can't tell, recall the ride that I took north, but I remember all I remember. The person I became in the few hours that I spent there. I shed my childhood like a skin and left it as an offering for the local spirits. For the first time, 2,000 miles from home, I chose my direction, knowing I was fully responsible for myself. This is the crossroad where I found out that my own true north is in my heart. And this is also the day I learned the valuable lesson that is as wiser to travel with a map. <laughs> Since then, I've come to recognize a good crossroad when I'm in the middle of one. Even if I don't see it coming lately, it feels as if all of humanity is in the midst of a collective crossroad, with climate change and, calam and the calamity of mass extinction reshaping our atmosphere, our landscapes, our options. The weathers of war. In the grand scheme of things, whether we're pondering our very existence on a cosmic scale or just deciding which route to take into town, we travel in an existential liminal zone the collective crossroad. In that moment of choosing a way and passing through, we come and unbecome and then become again. I sat once with a young man who I met on a hospital bench outside the neonatal intensive care unit. His baby, just hours old and two months early, was inside with his partner and her mother. He sat on the bench, stunned, I was a hospital chaplain intern. Assigned to that unit and making rounds, I'd meet the young mother with her baby later inside. But first, I asked this man if he would like some company. He was finding himself in a crossroad, dropped here by the arrival of a human he was now responsible for. He told me they were both barely 20. Pregnancy was a surprise and discovered late. 
early birth, fast and wildering, a crisis in so many ways. I said reassuring things he would not remember. And then I asked, tell me about your son. <laughs> what I witnessed next, I'll never forget. A coming, unbecoming, and becoming again. He began to tell me the too soon what now tale of getting to an urban hospital more than an hour from his real home. Their uncertainty, his partner's courage, and the power of her body about his baby's cry, a premature newborn's heaving chest, his skin and bones body, tiny limbs with miraculous feet and hands and perfect ears and wrinkled red face, the oxygen and IV tubes, the polycarbonate bassinet, and not being allowed yet to touch his son. All the while as I sat listening, I was watching the miracle of birth land in this man's body almost as if his shoulders broadened for the load right before my very eyes. His voice got deeper, and you could hear the rumble song of a new dad resonating in his chest. Both of us with tears streaming down our faces, I took his hand and whispered, Welcome to fatherhood. The grandma came out then to trade places with him, and I watched a man who had come and unbecome become again in the crossroads, choosing his way forward. There's a place on a dirt road off the beaten track not far from where that father and I both live. A road I choose when I need to slow down. Cars seldom pass here. There's a brook and the water moves through a stone culvert under the road, passing from one wide open marshy place into a different reedy marshy place. Migrating birds find sanctuary. There are turtles, otters, sometimes a moose. A crossroad of animal travel, people travel, and water travel. An open place in deep woods with enough vista to east and west for both sunrise and sunset skies. An atmosphere of elemental commingling that calms me. I leave little offerings here usually facing in the direction the water comes from. A shell from the ocean, a wild, wild flowers or leaves, a strawberry or a stone from some other place. I stopped there a few weeks ago. I was feeling sad about a cousin who died from COVID and the war news and storms in California and rising tides all over. I took a golden jingle shell I'd collected on a summer beach and carried it to the middle of the road. I was looking in the direction the water arrives from, feeling overwhelmed by too much coming at me all at once. I turned then, looking to the way the water flows on. On this day, there were coyote tracks in the snow. I found myself wondering what skin humanity will have to shed in order to move forward in order to choose a road to a sustainable future? That question may be too big for an ordinary intersection. I left my shell on a stone with a whispered thread of curiosity, an offering to the elements from our place on the curve of the earth, a prayer for the future from a person who does not pray. I wish you all safe travels through these moments of metamorphosis in the crossroads of our time, unbecoming and becoming once again.